In this video, I'm going to be talking about loneliness at the end of an emotionally abusive relationship. Welcome to the Divorce Sanctuary. I'm Elizabeth Goddard, author of Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. On this channel, I talk about healing from emotional abuse and divorcing emotionally from the abuser. I want to remind you that love should be unconditional. Divorcing emotionally is life-changing and that you have a duty of care towards yourself. That should be your mantra. I want to help you understand and process what's happening inside you and help you discover the best tools to heal on a deeper level, becoming the best version of yourself. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're returning, welcome back and thank you. And just a point that everything I talk about here in this video, you'll find in the description box below. Loneliness is a common emotion coming out of these relationships. There's nothing left of you. It feels like your soul has been sucked out. You may have been more focused on protecting your relationship than you were on protecting yourself. You might have been isolated from friends and family. So make sure you stay until the end as I will share with you my techniques for overcoming loneliness. It's something that gets talked about so much in the Divorce Sanctuary over on Facebook, the group that I run. You feel very lonely or empty inside. Loneliness after being in an emotionally abusive relationship could be for many reasons. You were more focused on protecting your relationship than yourself. There's nothing left of you. It feels like your soul has been sucked out of you. During your relationship, you might have been isolated from friends and family. Perhaps it was due to triangulation, trying to make you feel jealous. This loneliness could be due to the trauma bonding that took place and the fear of not knowing how to function without them. They've maneuvered themselves into your life and then into a place of power and they took control over you. They are so insecure, they actually fear that you will leave them. So they make you believe you can't function without them. And when you're no longer of use to them, they leave without a backward glance and you're left with emotions that are completely unfamiliar, living in fear. Those around you may be confused as to why it takes you so long to move on. And you may even hear people ask why you just can't get over it. I know I did. And one comment was, shouldn't you be over this by now? Everything you believe to be true is now turning out to be a lie. You've lost everything you need take time to grieve. You're grieving the fake future and you're grieving the soulmate. The loneliness may bring up feelings of being unworthy. They have moved on, leaving you feeling very alone. And during that devaluation stage, they told you time and time again what was wrong with you. You might just be discovering that not only did you lose yourself emotionally, mentally, physically and spiritually in the relationship, but you also lost your finances. You wake up one day and it's all over. This loneliness is a pain that emanates deep within you, deep within your soul. You can barely function. You don't understand who you have become and if the real you is still in there. There is a gift that comes from all of this and that gift is the feeling of being whole. The pain that you're experiencing are old wounds and I hope that one day you'll realise the gift that you've been given, which is the chance to heal. And this probably isn't what you're feeling at the moment, with every ounce of you trying to hold yourself back from engaging with them. The pain of being out of this relationship may be feeling worse than the pain of being in it. On average, people go back seven to eight times. And I believe this fear is one of the reasons. If you've just come out of an emotionally abusive relationship, you might be experiencing self-doubt, helplessness. You might be withdrawing. You might experience anxiety or self uh, second guessing yourself. It's very possible you're bound by invisible chains, but you can't untangle from them. It's really important to understand what happened and why. You were programmed to believe the abuse was love. You might not have seen the relationship as abusive and understanding and healing the original wound is crucial in this. 
And at this point, I just want to check in with you. How would it feel if you could say, this stops now? This abuse stops with me. Feel into your body and ask the question, would you be ready to make the changes and do the inner work needed to create that change? I said at the beginning of the video that I would share with you some tools to help you. It's really important to find the ones that work for you. The first one is to acknowledge the abuse. It can be difficult to process. You've been trained to see abuse as love, but one important step is seeing it as abusive. The second one is to grieve the loss. You may be going over the relationship, wondering if it was real, if they really did love you. Grieving is such an important part of this process. The past, who you thought they were, was it real? The present, where you are now, you didn't believe you would ever be here. This wasn't part of the deal. You did everything you were told. You've been waiting for the payout. Like that person at the one-armed bandit feeding the coins. Would the next one be the winner? And you need to grieve the fake future that was promised. The relationship was built on weak foundations and it has crumbled. I'll put the link to my workbook and MP3, Grieving the Past, the Present and the Future below. You can order it. Three and four run hand in hand. Heal the trauma and break the past patterns. It's so important if you never want to experience this again. It's important to find the original wound and this will help you see and break the pattern. The original wound is why you didn't see it as abuse. A lot of people coming out of these relationships experience some form of abuse during their childhood. They may have experienced a parent or caregiver as difficult or selfish. One or both parents were not available or present in any way and were possibly ne neglectful in their care of one or more children. I'll link the videos on scapegoating and parenting in the description box below. You have a chance to say the abuse stops here, to break the patterns and say no more. I've refused to repeat these with the people around me or my children. Reclaim yourself, start to build your toolbox with the things that can help you on your journey. I hope you found this useful. Nothing about this relationship was fair. And as they walk off into the distance, then create a new life, you're left picking up the pieces with so many questions and feeling very, very lonely. Start creating the toolbox of go-to items to help you overcome and heal from this relationship. Loneliness is so common coming out of these relationships. Acknowledge the abuse, even if it's just to yourself, those honest conversations. Grieve your loss, heal and break the patterns and reclaim the parts of you that you thought you'd lost. If you'd like to find out how to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, I'll put the links below and sending you loads and loads of loads of love.